started. Uh, basically, this is sort of a uh, conversation we started yesterday in a few other sessions and then we had last night at uh, the FDL Park. Um, there's a lot of a lot of really interesting organizations that are promoting space and uh, promoting space and uh, you know a lot of good ideas, a lot of energies, and very creative efforts underway. And, and uh, the conversation that we had was. So you have all these different groups, all these different splintered voices, and, and everybody has an opinion. Everyone has an opinion, right? But it's all it's all dispersed. <laughs> yeah, it's that's all dispersed. And uh, so the so I was talking with Jason. Scott. Jason. Oh, Jason. Squatch <laughs> is what it says on here. Squatch. Right. Uh, we were talking last night, and we were like, well, how can we make a more unified voice? Yeah, how can we? Uh, so that's kind of what today's conversation oh, is. Wish, you know, what, what sort of, what sort of uh, entity or paradigm or, or um, you know, what you suggested last night was maybe something along the lines of the National Geographic Society. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I, I was just thinking, what what are some what are some analogs out there? And when when the Western world was first starting its exploration of. Uh, like the late late nineteenth or late late nineteenth century, early twentieth century, the National Geographic Society kind of banded together in a uh, it banded together all these different people from different walks of life, different different um, ideals, and they all kind of came together with um, in, in a single place that would kind of funnel all these ideas together into a uh, into a, a, a narrative. And, Look at National Geographic. There are hundreds of uh, articles that have come through that, uh, all from different people from all over the place. So there's, it's not. It doesn't limit your. Uh, it doesn't limit the uh, diversity that you present to people. But it, it it provided a whole generation. My 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 father's generation, and even mine to some extent when I was younger, it provided them with a single place to go for all things science uh, or science and world related. And I think that, in some ways, kind of our, our, in, on a smaller uh, scale, the new space movement is kind of missing that. It, it, it doesn't have that one place where you could send Joe Schmo off the street and say, hey, read this, and like go through this. And, and he gets many different aspects of it all at once. Um, it, it just seems like we're kind of missing that, I think. It's called brainstorming. Everybody gets together like we're getting together and we throw all these ideas up and I write them all down there. Yep. And to try to sort out what ideas will work and what won't. Right, but the other, the other thing with brainstorming is brainstorming eventually has to start to coalesce into a single, uh, it doesn't have to be a single idea, but it has to start to coalesce. Certain ideas have to bubble to the top, and then as they bubble to the top, they need to be given a little bit more uh, exposure. And the thing that I'm afraid of is that typically, if you have, if you have, how, how did I say it? Like, if you have a hundred different people all blogging, blogging about like different things, the murmur is very loud. Um, but if, and and of those hundred people, like there are some that are very, very, very well done. There are some that are very badly done, and there's a lot that is just kind of. I mean, it's the bell curve. There's a lot that kind of falls in the middle, and. The problem is, I think it was you that said that it's the bad one. It's the it's the negatives that tend to be remembered by people who who want. It's the negatives that tend to be remembered by the people who want to uh, uh, be critical. Be, yeah, be critical. And uh, so, like, if you look at the uh, newspapers and the traditional media, they look at blogs and they look at uh, Twitter. Not so much now; they're starting to embrace it. But they look at that as a um, a, a non-rigorous form of expression, uh, and so they 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 discount it by and large. Right. It's just people blogging their opinions. There's right. no fact checking. It's just you know. But but sometimes that gets taken out of context, used in other references, and then becomes fact because it's been it's been referenced many times. Let me make a mean, suggestion. Um, you know, he talks about all these ideas, but if you're requiring, 
I think what you need first is a set of requirements. What are you trying to do? If you're trying to put 50 pounds of payload into orbit, then you can't accept any ideas that don't put 50 pounds of payload into orbit. So you have to do your homework first and be able to show F equals MA, Newtonian physics that will put 50 pounds into orbit. If you come up with an idea that will only put five pounds in order, it doesn't meet the requirements, so there's no use considering it and that, that idea any further. So I'm sure we could all throw a bunch of ideas out here, but if, you, if it doesn't meet the requirements, so you need to talk about what you're trying to do first. Well, what are the requirements? Are we talking about going into orbit? See, for instance, the guys out in uh, Mojave are building, uh, they're offering uh, trips into space uh, for people, and if we've got how much? I don't know, a million dollars, we can get a ride into space. But you notice uh, it only takes 4,800 feet per second to get you up to 60 miles. It takes 26,000 feet per second to put you in orbit. If you calculate the energy to get to 60 miles versus okay. the energy it well, takes to get into orbit, to wait a minute, let me finish. There's a factor of the factor, the ratio of energy to get into space and the energy to get into orbit is a factor of 30. You need 30 times more energy to get into orbit than you do just to go out 60 miles into space and fall back. So right. perhaps we should preface this. This is not a technical argument. This right. is this is this is how do we how do we expose to the general public what we're doing here? So, okay. Right. So so even well, yeah. So along those lines. So when everyone thinks about space, they think of NASA government space. There's a, there's a whole different part of space that, that we are familiar with, new space, commercial space opportunities. It has, it has a very diffuse, diffuse voice. You know, people don't know all the cool things that are going on in space. We, don't, we haven't abandoned our space program because NASA has stopped supplying the space shuttles. There's all kinds of things that are coming up. So what we're trying to do is figure out how can we present a unified voice or, or a source that will allow people to realize there's, there are things going on. So there are a couple like out there, like if you look at New Space News, where the Space Frontier Foundation aggregates news stories from the new space industry, and we, with that particular, um, it's mainly an e-newsletter with links, that one we try to lean towards as much as possible just what's going on as opposed to what people think about going on. I mean, unfortunately with the foundation it is a very political organization, so there is a lot of that in there. So it seems like the, the group would have to have simultaneously a new source of just factual information about what's happening to get people up to speed as well as a list of things that would allow them to get involved or to make a meetup in their area or something. So once they learn what they have, then they have a next action step as opposed to just talking. Right, right, yeah. I mean, so, so you know, to the layperson thinking, okay, I want to go to space.com, say, yeah. on the web, so that I can find out everything about space. Well, you go there and you don't find out about everything. It's, you get bombarded. You get a few things, but you know it's. And it's not to say it's not a good website. It's right. a very good website, but if you don't know what you're looking for and you don't know how to find it on there, you will not find it. Right. I mean, because I'm sure we all have lists of websites that we go to regularly to find out to find that information. But the the situation that you're describing is actually mirrored right now with Web 2.0. It's what everybody's mm -hmm. talking about. It, it's not just about the content. It's filtering like signal versus noise, right? That's yeah. kind of what I was thinking about when you were talking. So. There are certain sites right now that personally I'm a lot more responsive to on the web and that don't just happen to be space sites that we can also learn from what's going on in, in more like blog format blog websites are curatorial sites. Um, web 2.0 is all about um, not just your presence but your kind of your reputation. Okay, so it's like what do people think of you? Are you a trusted source? Mm -hmm. I think all of us recognize here that space.com, while on the balance, has some interesting articles. By and large, if you actually have a little bit more of an interest in space, it's not going to satisfy you. So like the reputation of space.com is actually probably very low. But if there's another website out there that might offer you a, maybe a more um, pointed examination or could even pull from multiple sources, and if you know that the curator behind that particular site is actually trusted and has basically good taste, you're going to respond better to that. And I think that's kind of what you're describing. You're trying to build something that has a more curatorial focus. Right. Like the net, you, like we respect National Geographic as, as a source. It's a trusted voice. A trusted, yes. And so, but is there one out there now in, in, that's involved in, in space or new space? So are, are we talking about like uh, 
we're trying to fill the need of there's not a way to distribute information and, and how to you know uh, harness that the way National Geographic has, or is it more like uh, a trade association or chamber of commerce that we're looking for to sort of represent us in the way that you know our non-government interests and you know sort of shape well, what it is we're doing? Well, I mean, I, I I don't know exactly right. if what's the best way to to coalesce this. I mean, it is you know. The, the idea is that we, you know, is it a website? Is it an organization? Is it is it, uh, is it some activity? The, the thought is that you know we we it it would be nice to be able to present to the public a, a a good source of information, a trusted source of information about things that are going on in space, other than NASA, because right now everyone looks to NASA to, to figure out what's going on in space. Well, they're not the only game in town. They're certainly not. They're becoming the, the lesser piece of the pie. So, like for example, one in my opinion, one interesting source that has kind of popped up is the Symphony of Science stuff. So basically, people have taken clips of like Carl Sagan or Neil deGrasse Tyson or other you know prominent figures, Brian Cox, and edited them using auto tune and so forth. And there's like an entertainment value, there's a visual value, um, there's also an informational value there. And I think that that is something that people responded to. Now, these are kind of popping up and more like Devour.com, which is a very mainstream like handpicked video curating site, which isn't specifically to do with space, but these things are making their way out there. I think the idea is you have to find something that's both curatorial and aimed at space, and I don't know that that's out there yet. I mean, Space Flight Now is interesting, and that has, deals with more uh, new space type ventures, but... Yeah, it tends know. to be covering the news, which is good. It's right. good to cover the news. I think what you keyed key in on there that's really good is, uh, you're right, we, we need something that's curatorial. We need something that's not, it doesn't produce its own content necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not to say that the people that contribute to it don't produce their own content. You really need something that will filter, as you said, and present it in a very unified format. Uh, I think that's... And rise above the noise. Exactly. And so that it becomes the source you go look for, of course, for that kind of information. I think like rising above the noise wouldn't be a problem if you actually make a decent site because there is right. nothing there. Right. Um, I mean, the one closest thing I can think of would be you know the space review. That's yes, and even that, that is actually is, the one that we were talking about. We couldn't remember the name. Yeah, it's Jeff Faust, but even that is largely uh, opinionated and has a lot of um, of stuff in it that if you were just trying to introduce somebody to it to let them form their own opinions about it, you couldn't really send right. them there. But the thing is, I think before you can even build a website, you have to find the trusted source. You're going to have to find the curator, the, you know, what is it, chrisandersonted.com. You have to find that guy that in the industry is trusted enough to be, you know, not as biased and understands the industry enough to pass the information. And it's like, who do we think that and, and, and as a website, the only way to maybe do this, I mean, is it, you know, I mean, like, maybe something like the, you know, I'm just, out of my head, but like the UN, like the, you know, for, for a united sort of uh, focal points, an organization that maybe can be a spokesperson or a, or, a, or, a, or a center or a nexus for this kind of stuff. I mean, there are lots of organizations and they all do good things, but they're all they're very specific to their niche. And you know, like Space, Space Frontier Foundation, I mean, they're doing some really good stuff. But does it, and, and, and but they're more political in, in some sense, and maybe entrepreneurial. And, and but, so you go to them for those things, but not necessarily for the whole picture. Yeah. And I do think the goal would not be to replace those. The goal would be to include those right. as part of it. I mean, say what you will about the UN, the UN not being useful. It's still a figurehead. Um, like, say what you will about the UN kind of like just fighting amongst themselves, and at the end, what do they do? Well, they are a figurehead. They are a place where these things can be brought up in a United, uh, United Method. And I think that uh, I think that you're right. Like that's the kind of thing where you need all these groups to kind of be represented in a larger sense. Um, sorry, I lost my train a little bit there. So, in, in my opinion, the the, what, the situation you're describing is not a top-down uh, scenario. Like finding that person, like even right. if it's almost like a celebrity-based thing where it's top-down. That, in my opinion, doesn't work, especially on the web. People are very skeptical to the, the idea of chatter. So like if something's very opinionated and it's trying to like, like you know, Scientology's great or space is amazing, whatever your particular agenda is, people are very sensitive to that. It turns mm -hmm. people off. So it has to be a bottom-up approach. You have to like just lay out whatever your ideas are, whatever your content is, and let people come to you and let the word of mouth spread in that Web 2.0 fashion where people are sharing links, retweeting, putting it up on their Facebook, whatever. And if like you look at mainstream media, they're all doing that right now. And it's, it's kind of like everyone's late to the party, but like CNN 
shills for Twitter, they shill for Facebook because they have this little inclusive thing where they're going to put up their content, but they want you to move it. So basically, like when, with the Web 2.0 format, you're selling CNN, you're selling National Geographic or whatever, and, and that's it's kind of empowering and it's also kind of like sad at the same time because we're still doing all their to, marketing work. We still would have to find one person that we trust enough to aggregate that information. That well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have to be, I don't know that you'd have to find someone that you trust as so much as someone that could become the trustworthy person. Like, for example, I'll use this, there are way too many geek culture sites for me to keep up with all of them. And so I follow the MarySue.com because it collects a bunch of them. I have no clue who runs that. But all I know is they put out stuff that I like to read and they do it reliably. And they've built up that trust because I don't know who they were originally, but I know that I trust the site now. And I think that might be more what we're looking for instead of, okay, here's someone, now go do your thing. Let's I'm find people who are doing the you, thing. You and put a person ahead that says, like, look at this person, we know him, but from the internal side of our decision of who's going to start this, you know, if we go to any of the current people that are running these things, running the foundation, running space reps, running space review, currently you you can't really have any of them because they're all have a very specific bent and unfortunately in new space right now it's incredibly opinionated and political, which is why it's having such a hard time reaching out to the mainstream because you, there's nothing you can go to where, you know, so I'm not saying we would have to have a figurehead, but just who who would start this? Who do we you know, think would be able to say, okay, this is my information and this is what we think has all the facts without being like, I'm pro this or anti that. You need a snob. You need somebody who you can't buy. That's what the biggest thing is. <laughs> Seriously, like yeah, somebody who, right. like beyond reproach, somebody that's like, if you, if, you know, say it's like x I, I x is fine, I'm just using this as an example, but x like really wants to push this links agenda, like, oh, we'll even pay you something. Like, they would just refuse it because yeah. they would only publish something that interests them. Mm -hmm. So you find like, Andy Warhol of space, or just some a-hole who's just like, F you, I don't want your money, you know, I, what I want is something interesting and engaging, and per, for me personally, the, the blog that springs to mind is the new Shelton Wet Drop, it's just this kind of culture site, it's it's science, kind of science based, it's run by Imp Kerr, which is a design company in New York, and they just run this amazing blog, they put up like four or five new stories a day, so that's what you need, something like that, where it's engaging little snippets, that's another thing, people have short attention spans, yeah. so like you said, finding something that really appeals to you, once right. you find maybe it. maybe like one or two comments of your own and then have the link to the original source if people want to go Exactly, and that's exactly how they run it, and so that particular site, but the space version of that, to me, it sounds like that's what you guys are describing. You know, maybe it's not that we need like a figurehead, because I'm just thinking about like all top and Kurzweil AI um, and their automated way of dealing with blogs, or you know, we've got Boing Boing Blog, which is you know, a, a, a collection of trusted people that are getting together to aggregate content. But maybe it's just we need some way of tying it all together. Maybe new space isn't the right thing because, you know, that's so, you know, closely associated with the Space Frontier Foundation. Yeah, I don't I mean, think it has to be new space. But, I, but there's you know, like a wrong keyword that, like, yeah. that, Commercial you know, space. so I want my flip book to populate with aerospace, not just NASA's aerospace, but like, you know, everything that we're talking about. Okay. So what is that keyword that, I Human put it into flight. Google and I'm going to get the yes. alerts for that's everybody. What's that? Uh, space flight or human space flight, because that's going to include new space and NASA and Russia and whoever else is getting into it. I honestly it's not that think, catchy of a I don't think it's that easy. I think if it was just one, <laughs> like it was one Google alert, I think people would already be doing it. I think that's yeah. what makes a good blog. It's a little bit of diversity. So yeah. like you could be reading about like something that's more aerospace based, or you could be reading something that's more like um, astronautical based. So there's. The idea of finding a plurality of ideas would keep people engaged. So I go back to like the National Geographic example. Uh, huge variety of sure. things go into National Geographic, uh, but it's all science or humanities based. Like you're not going to see a whole lot of political stuff. So, yeah, so like an Geographic. overarching umbrella with right. diversity beneath that. Exactly. Uh, so I actually I was telling him that like on the way home last night I was thinking about this and what it really this is my opinion. It would, it would almost need something like the Un Magazine. We call this the Un Conference. You almost need something like the Un Magazine. You almost need something like the the not for profit Un Magazine. Like obviously you want it to be a not for profit uh, because then you can't be bought. That's the whole that's the whole idea. Um, I somebody brought up the fact of like multiple uh, multiple trusted sources. That also is a very key part of that. Uh, and even those trusted sources could be uh, rotated by, as they 
like I, I, those, tr those trusted sources would be your editorial staff, more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, they or they would be the ones that decide kind of like which ones roll to the top. And you'd want to make sure you have lots of diversity in that uh, in that group. But you'd also want to make it so that the group could not steal me. Uh, and so I was thinking about like how can you do that? It's it's a very difficult thing. There's a lot of like little like engineering solutions you can do to that sort of thing that I came up with. The UN without it. veto power, right? That's, it, that's right. But you still need to have that veto power with enough with enough. It, I mean, it's, the, it's the whole idea of how the checks and balances work. Like popular majority. Yeah, exactly. So if enough people said this is a really crap story, <laughs> it's not going on there. Then it's not going on there. But you need to have it so that the one or two people, like if you had a ten-person editorial staff, one or two people could push a story through, as long as there was not a huge objection from it. And I think that's the kind of that's the kind of way that you need to look at that. Um, if you have, if you're going for a site or something that presents these stories that are spread out there to the winds, they need to be diverse enough to bring in multiple stories. But they need to have an understanding of what they're trying to do there, um, a, a, a combined understanding, so that it does present itself as a united front, um, and they're not fighting among each other to get their ideas across. Oh, it sounds like a good book. website. Space already, right? On space. <laughs> no, I just from what his conversation was like, it sounded like I, space. Or I like up space. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think the title though would. From too many people who are unfamiliar with the concept, all. Well, then you, then you can call it you in space. Same problem. That is new. You guys are going to start getting kicked out soon. Um, if this conversation was worthy to you, or if there's something interesting about this conversation you'd like to carry on, there are still some pod spaces open uh, a little bit later on in the day, so feel free to make more of this. What do you guys think? You want to continue the conversation later this afternoon? Or maybe we just sit on it and steam on it a little while. <laughs> it, it, it is something that is difficult because like, it's very easy for all of us to go out there and just like say, oh, well, I'm going to be that person. But that defeats the purpose of what that discussion is all about. Like, you do need to kind of have all these people out there who are producing good content and are kind of trusted sources. You need to have them really come together or be brought together. Somebody could bring them together. But they need to, be, they need to come together and say like this is a valuable like thing for us to work towards. Just describe space up. I know. Right. And, and, like, <laughs> this my, so this is my first space up and I want you to know. Space we all got together. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you had a great idea. This is this is this is <laughs> well this is my first space up and uh, what I what it what occurred to me after my first couple of things is this is the kind of thing how this came about needs to be applied to the dispersion of information. Yes. So when's your space up? Huh? When's your space up? Next year's space up, though. <laughs> 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 I'll help with that. Yeah. <laughs> or for SpaceX, do you think I have time? <laughs> no. Uh, no. That, it, this guy's did. <laughs> Scott did. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me the discussion here maybe is how do we distinguish between an informed opinion and a poorly informed opinion? I think we need to somehow figure out how to sort those opinions. I don't think you can teach teach good taste. And bad. <laughs> That's right. No, but you can vote it. There you go. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the web, right? It's more, yeah. it's more and utilizing some of those web point two, two point ideas out there would be very valuable. So check out the new Shelton web. New, new Shelton.com Shelton. slash wet slash drive. It's like the best blogs on the internet.